one I did not mention about, and this guy is called Issa. We have told you many times that when people are detained in CMI, women are raped, boys are sodomized. Victims have identified this man called Issa, having sodomized young boy and raped girls. This is Issa. He was a part of the Tuesday operation. Now you know that the rape was intended, it was by criminals, and they had very nasty intentions against us. Two days ago, ladies and gentlemen, you saw that the regime promoted Frank Mwesigwa to the rank of AIGP, Assistant Inspector General of Police. Now, Frank Mwesigwa is currently the director of operations in Uganda Police. His high-handedness and criminal actions against us in Luwuka led to the 2020 November massacre where more than 150 innocent Ugandans were shot and killed. He was not punished. He was rewarded with a promotion. The same way, a one Abaine who shot Ashraf on the head and got him in the, that condition that he's in right now. He was promoted to commissioner of police. This was a veiled message to other police officers who still have a semblance of respect for the rule of law to encourage them to act like the messages of this world. Museven himself sanctioned criminality, ladies and gentlemen, after the Arua attack. You remember he shamelessly said that there was no attempt. I mean that he said to those that, that were attempting to prosecute these people, he told them that those criminals beat me very well. That was General Museveni for you. And that way, he was assuring the criminals of protection and safety for as long as they deal with his opponents with brutality and with ruthlessness. Now this explains the Tuesday unprovoked attack. And this convinces us that these people had to come to do more than harm us, to do more than disable us. They wanted to kill us. We don't know when they're coming back again, but it's important that we tell the world what the regime is intending to do to us. I want to appreciate very sincerely all of you friends and comrades here in Uganda and abroad that have sent us messages of love, uh, messages of sympathy, messages of solidarity and encouragement since the Tuesday's violence. Thank you very, very much. From political leaders, to religious and cultural leaders, to citizens and friends, we don't take that for granted, ladies and gentlemen. Those that have raised their voices here in Uganda, our brothers in Kenya, in Tanzania, and all over Africa, we salute you and we appreciate you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Our diaspora chapters in the US, in Canada, and all over the world, we salute your efforts. We thank you for raising your voices and coming out to protest against this brutality. And we hope that Uganda's development partners will take Tuesday's actions by the regime against we, the peaceful citizens, as another wake-up call. In several ways, you, friends, have either knowingly or unknowingly sponsored our operation, and we ask you to stop. We want to encourage you to review the support that you give to Dictator Museveni thinking that you're giving it to Uganda. Because the regime is using all that they get from you, the development partners, to oppress people with impunity. So we ask you to review your relationship with Museveni and do it as quick as possible because Ugandans are dying. We also want to request you to hold accountable the commanders of the security agencies that use lethal and unnecessary force and sometimes illegal ammunition against innocent citizens.
we ask you, development partners, the international community, to walk the talk.